Okay, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, even as we're taking our photograph, because Tony Lacavera is really in a hurry. I can barely introduce him, he's in such a hurry. Uh, but you may recognize his name because uh, of a previous movie. He was involved in the mobile telephone business, had some ups and downs, but oh, eventually yeah, one of these. <laughs> got out alive <laughs> and has taken some of that good money and is going to now waste it in the blockchain Headlong business. Headlong into <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> good to meet you, Tony. Likewise. Most Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I, I was a, a great kind of high level uh, from Alex, and, and, and I think that it really was, truthfully, like I've seen a lot of these, I think that was really a great overview of what blockchain uh, means today and in the future, uh, and particularly the big, big world uh, vision. Uh, what I'm going to talk about for a few minutes today is how do we get uh, people actually using blockchains? How do we make something happen in the near term? And how do we create some economic value around that in the relatively near term? Recognizing this is a brand new technology, and I spent a lot of time telling people about my, the early days of my career, which was, and this is really dating myself, making websites in the late 90s when I was a kid just out of college. That was my first business. And at that time, everybody wanted a website. Did everyone remember those days? Remember like late 90s, like dial up, just going to high speed, and everybody wanted a website. No one really had any idea what the utility of it might be. No one really had any idea what the business model might be. And the ideas and things like e-commerce, and now mobile commerce, weren't even on anyone's minds. We're in that place right now with blockchain and cryptocurrency. So if you think about it from a, a technological evolution standpoint, there's no question the fourth industrial age is upon us. Uh, and it's being driven by AI predominantly, actually, in my opinion, uh, and, uh, and other ancillary technologies like IoT and blockchain. But really, AI promises to change every corner of the economy and every facet of our lives in the coming you know, 5, 10, 20 years. So how do we make use of blockchain today? This is a little bit of my history. I'm going to skip over it. But the point of the, the slide is really to say that I've spent 20 years starting and building commercializing businesses in software and telecommunication services. And without question, the biggest challenge I can see in starting a software business is getting adoption, getting people to use it. So you go in and you try to make a sale and you say, hey, do you want to try my software? And people are like, whoa, <laughs> so am I going to trust my business with this new piece of software? It takes a long time, and as soon as something goes wrong, you're in big trouble. And I've had three businesses fail for this exact reason. I just couldn't get it to market fast enough. Uh, and, and if there was problems, people quickly want to back away from it. So I think when we talk about the evolution of blockchain and how it could actually become widely adopted and useful, it's a unique one in that, similar to the internet, it's a network effect situation. You need, every, you need a lot of people, a lot of constituents doing a lot of things on it in order for people to perceive real value and use it. And so what we're talking about doing is how do we get people all collectively using it and seeing some value from it. So I'm going to go quick because Alex did a great overview of this, but to me, there's this massive amount of jargon as that I saw. I, mean, I was in the wireless business with Win Mobile, and there's like tons of 4G this, LTE that, you know, IP this, uh, tons of jargon, tons of jargon around mobile phones. Obviously, an internet, tons of jargon. We're in the same place with blockchain. And like, I'm an engineer by education, and I can't understand half the stuff I'm reading about this stuff. So this is a slide intended to break it down for what I think really what blockchain is. It's simply a new database technology. It's a new database technology. So it has the long-term potential to disintermediate businesses like Oracle, everyone's Oracle or, or Microsoft databases uh, or you know, Amazon AWS databases. Those are centralized systems. And, and we all work in businesses in this room. Uh, we all work for companies in this room that have database systems that are centralized. This is just a new database solution that's decentralized. Some advantages of it, it's open source. What does that mean? It's open source, that means anyone can develop anything they want on it. Anyone can build their own solution on it. You don't have to call Microsoft and say, hey, I want to develop, can I get this API, can I get a group of developers? You can create your own rules and operations and workflow on this new database technology because it's open source. It's free to use. Second big thing is that it's secure. And what does that really mean? Well. Today, in order for businesses to conduct transactions, you have to have some sort of trust relationship. 
you know, if you're a, a retailer and you buy stuff for your store and you're going to sell it to consumers, there's a bunch of trust relationships going on. Well, you have to, first, that supplier to your store has to believe that you're going to pay them for the merchandise they send you. And when you give the merchandise to your customer, you have to believe that you're going to get paid by that customer. So there's trust relationships that are needed. Banks facilitate those trust relationships. The blockchain has the potential to disintermediate that. And by what does that mean? It means that you can, as a, as a merchant, as a consumer, uh, you can transact with that re as a supplier too. You can create an ecosystem, and that's where tokens come in. So imagine the supplier to the retailer and the retailer to the customer. Everyone, if everyone's using a token instead of a Canadian dollar and a Visa card, then suddenly you no longer need the payment intermediaries. You no longer need the banks, and it's a closed system. And it can be a trust relationship because the blockchain is secure. That's what the advantage of this new kind of database technology is. Suddenly we can transact with people we don't know, and we can do it confidently and securely. Second big thing that makes blockchain interesting is that it's decentralized. So you hear this a lot, people saying it's like all over the place, it's decentralized nodes. There was a great chart up there about that, there's a great chart here about that. What does that really mean? It means it's hard to corrupt this new database technology. Because right now in a centralized database, where all of our banks and businesses run on in the world, if you change something in that database and you have the permissions to do that, you, that, that can create a significant problem. It may not be a legal transaction. And we rely on that authority, that centralized authority, to tell us that that was permitted. Well, in a decentralized world, now everyone has the data, and everyone's operating by this set of rules. And if one location, one node, as they're called on blockchains, does something outside the rules, someone does a transaction that isn't, isn't correct, isn't justified, is illegal, is not within the rules of the system, all the other nodes know. That makes it very hard to attack. And that's one of the biggest, second, second biggest advantages of blockchain, in my view. All of this relies on the cryptography of blockchain not being broken. And there's a lot of people be that believe that the quantum machine, has everyone heard of the quantum computer? Quantum computer? This is an amazing, by the way, Canadian company called D-Wave. Everyone heard of D-Wave? D-Wave, totally amazing Canadian company. You should really look it up. They created the first working quantum computer. Quantum machine is proven it was certain math problems to be able to solve math problems 125 million times faster than the fastest processor today. It's a whole new way of computing. So something that would have taken an Intel chip literally like 400 years to solve, the quantum machine has proven to solve in 10 milliseconds, 125 million times faster. What, what is interesting about that is that now suddenly all kinds of secure database technologies can be broken, cryptography, that are used in the databases we, the whole economy operates on, that are bank databases, for example, those can now potentially be broken by a quantum machine. So the, the modern, there's a Harvard the, uh, theorist that says the modern nuclear weapon is a quantum machine. Because you want to completely destroy the economy, you start breaking bank database systems. Maybe the blockchain is a solution to prevent that kind of nuclear war. One interesting thing to get commercialization happening soon is co consortiums are being formed. So there's a lot of big names up on this chart. Consortia are being formed to create rules and regulations around blockchain. Right now, it truly is the wild west. And anyone who's thinking about, in this room, is thinking about investing in cryptocurrency, I've been investing for 15 years with my business, Global Life Capital. I've made over 100 venture investments. I've had tons of zeros, tons of failures in there. I've had some successes in there. I would never buy a, a cryptocurrency today. I do not believe it is a wise investment today. I would rather take that money and have fun in Las Vegas, which I do do. <laughs> uh, but if you're thinking about investing $5,000 somewhere, a crap table is as good a place as cryptocurrency, in my, in my opinion, today. Why is that? It's because governments and regulators haven't created the framework and parameters within which we're going to exist in this new digital ecosystem. We take it for granted today. We live our lives today operating with our dollars, our Visa cards, our MasterCards, cards, whatever, we, our bank accounts, all those things that are like actually the fabric of how we conduct our life. We just take it for granted that it's all working properly. And why is it working properly? Because it's been refined over decades and decades of regulation and rules and parameters and a framework that allows everyone to have confidence in that system. That system is reliable. That system has rules that are well-known and publicized, rules that are standardized. 
so that everyone can operate within them. We don't have that today in blockchain, and we don't have that today in cryptocurrencies. Today, we can create a token by writing a computer program, and I can make up any rules I want in a computer program. I make up, I make up the token. I make up what the token stands for. I make up what value it's associated with it. <clears throat> and if I get enough people believing that that is what it is, then that is what it is. But no one's regulating that. So there's lots of conversations about how government needs to be involved. And I, I spent my whole career fighting the regulator, fighting the CRTC with Wind Mobile. I brought competition in wireless. I brought prices down, and it was a big battle with the CRTC to make that happen. So I'm the last person that would ever say we should have more regulation. Well, the last person. I'm saying for blockchain and cryptocurrency to work, we need standardization. How do we get standardization? We need regulation. How do we get adoption? We need standardization. We need regulation for standardization for adoption. That's the only way this is going to work. And I think that we're at the very, very start of such an exciting era uh, in this. Uh, such, a, such an exciting One more slide I want to show you. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're at this like really, really, really exciting place where we're at the start of that curve. So the, my last closing message is you haven't missed anything. No one should be rushing home to create a crypto exchange account and start buying Bitcoin. You haven't missed anything. This is going to be a very, very long road and a very big transition over an extended period of time. And the same way there was a mad rush in the late 90s into the internet, and in the same way so many people got killed in startup companies, so many retail investors got killed, we're in the same place, unfortunately, right now, where there are literally hundreds of not, th well, there's thousands of ICOs out there that don't make any sense, folks. They're not going to work. But people believe they're going to work today, just like people believed every single dot-com company in 1998 was going to make something huge happen in the world. There are a few. There is Amazon. But how many other e-commerce companies are, you know, didn't work? So when you think about investing in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, I would say rely on big name brands, rely on big name brands, and rely on proven management teams if you're thinking about investing. And you gotta look long, because it is going to be a roller coaster of a ride. Thank you. <laughs> what you're doing, can we invest in that? Yes, you can actually. Yeah. I just listed you're my You're running yeah. away to pitch for money or to give money? I'm actually pitching and donating, actually. Uh -huh. It's a sponsorship thing. <laughs> it's lovely to give away money. It's not that much fun to ask for it, isn't it? Yeah, but this yeah. is the first time I listed my company in Canada publicly, so it's on the public stock market. I, it's a new experience for me, Moses. I had really, I'm learning a lot quickly. Okay, well, we'll have you back next year, but I wanted everybody in the room to know and you to know that Jordy Rose of D-Wave was on this stage in 2013. I knew that, and I am a huge fan of Jordy Rose. He, right. he and everyone in this room should be really proud as Canadians of what D-Wave is doing. We, Canada has a leadership position in quantum computers that could truly transform the world and make AI a reality. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Some people are nervous about AI, but I think we're close to AI working, and I think Jordy Rose has had a, had a quietly, as we, as we all do as Canadians, quietly, humbly, he's actually created a technology that's working. Bravo, Idea City <laughs> Online, check it out. Thank you, Thank you sure. very Thank much. You. Thank you. And uh, maybe we can get together another time. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Come with me. Sure.